while hunting for my next video idea, I came across this website that recently won site of the day and is up for the portfolio honors as well. So you know it's packed with impressive animations. Out of all the amazing animations it had, this one really stood out for me, the main portfolio page. It's complex, really trickier than I thought but captivating at the same time. After roughly 8 hours of work, I have managed to recreate a pretty solid version of it covering its all integrate animations. We have got the sticky project indices animated with a clip mask effect on the numbers, probably one of the most time intensive animations I have tackled. Then there is the project list with an active indicator highlighting the current project in the view, a seamless image preview update and a vertical scroll progress bar on the very right. Today, I'll show you how to build this kind of portfolio page for your site using just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, GSAP and Scroll Trigger. If you enjoy my work and find it helpful by any means, please drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And for those interested in the source code, check out the link in the description. With the pro membership, you get access to micro projects like this twice a week and a complete website template every month, packed with award style animations you won't find elsewhere, all for the price of a latte. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start by setting up the navigation. I'll add a couple of placeholder links for the primary nav items. Next, I'll add a few more nav items below also as placeholder links. To create some empty space above and below our gallery, I will add a couple of divs with the class white space which will style later with CSS to create the desired spacing. Now let's build the gallery which will house all of our projects. Each project will have two main parts, the index and the images. Inside the index section, I'll create a wrapper div called mask and add an h1 element with the project number in it. The images section will be left empty for now as we'll populate it dynamically later using JavaScript. I'll duplicate this project structure 7 more times, updating the index number for each one. Next up is the project list. At the top, I will add an indicator with the symbol div inside it, which we will style as a triangle later with CSS. Following that, I will add 8 project names, each wrapped in a paragraph element. Be sure to assign the active class to the first one. Then I will add a preview image section with an image element inside. We will update its source dynamically based on whichever image is in the center of the viewport as you scroll. Lastly, I will add an empty div called progress bar which will display the scroll progress on the right side of the page. And that's it for the HTML. Now let's move on to styling. Let's start with the basics. First, I am hiding the scroll bar with display none for a cleaner look. Next, setting margin and padding to 0 and using box sizing border box will help us avoid layout shifts. For images, I am setting width and height to 100% so they fill their containers with object fit cover to maintain their aspect ratio. For text styling, h1 elements will use a custom font at a bold size of 58 pixels. Links and paragraphs are styled with uppercase text, a smaller font size and a transition effect for the smooth color changes on project change. Now onto the layout. The nav is fixed at the top of the page covering the full viewport width with some padding. I am using justify content space between to evenly distribute the main links. The nav item section is positioned at the top of the viewport and centered a bit horizontally. For white space divs, W1 and W2 each take up the full viewport width with W1 set to half the viewport height and W2 slightly smaller to balance the layout. The main gallery houses all projects arranged vertically with a gap to create separation. Each project is designed to fill the viewport height with index and images sections. The index section is relatively small containing a mask that will animate the numbers while the images section has a flexible height to adjust the project images.
for the index mask. I'll position it near the top left with overflow hidden which will later use to reveal animations within. Moving to the project list, project names is centered vertically and holds an indicator with a triangle shaped symbol created using clip path. Inactive project names are set to a grey color with the active name highlighted in black. The preview image is positioned at the bottom right, maintaining an opacity of 0.9 for a subtle overlay effect. Lastly, the project bar on the right side is fixed and will animate to show scrolling progress. And to keep the layout responsive, I will add some media queries at the end. These will adjust the positions and sizes of key elements like nav items, project names, and the preview image to ensure everything looks good on smaller screens. That wraps up the CSS. Let's jump into the JavaScript to bring these animations to life. First, we'll listen for the DOM content loaded event and initialize these apps scroll trigger plugin which helps us control animations based on scroll position. To make the scrolling smooth, I'll paste some code from Lenny's documentation, a scroll handling library. This makes the scroll animation fluid by updating scroll trigger as we scroll. Next, we have a couple of helper functions. The first one, split text into spans, takes each h1 element inside the mask class and splits the two digit number into individual spans. This helps us animate each digit separately, giving it a cool dynamic effect. Then we have populate gallery. This function goes through each images container and adds a set number of images inside it. For each image, it creates a container, assigns a source to load the image from our assets folder and then adds it to the page. I'm using image index to keep track of which image we are on so it loops through images as we add them. Then, for the progress bar on the right side, we'll use a scroll trigger instance to animate its side on scroll. As we scroll through the page, the bar will fill up by updating the scale Y property in real time, indicating our scroll progress from top to bottom. Alright, let's move on to updating the preview image as we scroll through the projects. First, I'll select the main preview image. This is the large image displayed on the site, which will update dynamically. Next, I'll grab all individual project images inside image elements using query selector all. Now, for each image in the list, I'm creating a scroll trigger. This trigger will detect when each image enters the center of the viewport at the top 50% and bottom 50% positions. When an image scrolls into the center, I'll update the source of the preview image, setting it to the source of the image in view. 
This gives a smooth transition effect as you scroll through the page. The preview image on the side updates in sync with whichever project is in focus. Now let's set the movement for the indicator and activate each project name as we scroll. First, I'll grab the indicator element which is a small triangle that moves up and down to highlight the active project. I am also setting indicator step to 18 which is the distance it should move for each project. Then I select all project names converting them into an array. This allows us to loop through and update the active class for each project name dynamically. For the indicator, I set its initial position at the top to 0. Now we go through each project and create a scroll trigger for it. This trigger detects when a project element is centered in the viewport between top 50% and bottom 50%. When a project scrolls into view, the indicator moves to match the project's position. We use GSAP's 2 function to smoothly animate the top property of the indicator, moving it to the calculated position based on the project's index. At the same time, we toggle the active class on the project names, highlighting the one currently in view. If we scroll back up, the only back callback runs which moves the indicator to the previous project's position and activates the previous name. This setup keeps the indicator and project names in sync as you scroll, creating a visual cue that follows your progress down the list. It's a simple but effective way to enhance navigation and make it clear which project you are currently viewing. Alright, let's break down every part of the scroll trigger animation for the project index numbers in detail. To start, I select the elements involved in the animation for each project. These include the mask, which is a wrapper around the project's index number, the digit wrapper that contains both digits, and each individual digit itself, the first and second digits. By separating the digits, I can animate each one independently, adding to the dynamic effect. I set their initial position to 0 to ensure everything starts aligned in a neutral position. Additionally, I set the mask to have an absolute position, placing it at the top of the project initially. This setup allows me to take control of where the mask appears on the screen as we scroll. Now I will create a scroll trigger for each project which will monitor when each project is visible in the viewport. This trigger starts when the top of a project reaches the bottom of the viewport, meaning it's just about to come into view. It ends when the bottom of the project reaches the top of the viewport, which marks the project leaving the screen. I'll also add settings like Anticipate Pin to make the animation smoother as the mask sticks to a fixed position, fast scroll end for better performance and prevent overlaps to ensure that animations from neighboring projects don't interfere with each other. Within the on update callback of the scroll trigger, I calculate several important values that control the behavior of the mask and digit animations. First, I get the position of the project in the viewport, which allows me to track exactly where it is on the screen. I also find the center point of the window, which I'll use as a reference for positioning the mask. Additionally, I look ahead to the next project in the list. This lets us anticipate when the current project is leaving and the next one is entering which is key for a seamless transition. To make the animation even more responsive, I calculate a modifier based on the current scroll speed known as scroll velocity. Faster scrolling will adjust the animation's timing slightly to keep it smooth while slower scrolling makes the animations more gradual. I also set a point near the bottom of the viewport called the push point. This controls when the mask begins moving giving us better control over the timing of the transition. The primary goal of this setup is to position the mask in the center of the viewport when a project is fully in view. As we scroll down, the mask sticks to the center, creating a reveal effect for the project index number. When the next project approaches the center, the current mask smoothly moves up, taking its index number with it while next project's mask slides in to replace it.
If we scroll back up, the process reverses, the mask shifts back to the previous project, bringing the earlier project's index back into view. This dynamic positioning ensures that the mask moves smoothly from one project to the next without any abrupt jumps. Now let's track the scroll velocity to make the animations more responsive. First, I set up active index to track the active project, last scroll top to store the previous scroll position and scroll velocity to capture the current scroll speed. I then add a scroll event listener on the window. Each time we scroll, I calculate the difference between the current scroll position and the last one to get the scroll velocity. This value updates continuously, allowing animations to adjust based on how fast or slow the user is scrolling. This makes the transitions feel smoother and more natural. This setup gives us a polished, interactive feel to the project list, making each project's index number scroll in and out of view in sync with the user's scroll position. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.